Exchange. Today we've got with us Danny Hughes from Divine Capital, Rex Macy from Wilmington Trust, Drew Nordleg from Hightower, and of course our own Rick Santelli joins us. And from the notes I read, gang, everybody joining us today, Rick aside, is cautiously optimistic. Danny, the caution, what is the caution about? What are you concerned about here, even as this market does try to power higher? There's so much caution, actually, and we've kind of had our foot a little bit on the brake for a while, but you still have had to participate in these markets, Bill, like we've talked about. Yep. You know, the Fed and the government have really incentivized corporate cash hoarding uh, over the past few years, and, and corporations have found better ROI in actually delivering buybacks and dividends. And, you know, at, at some point, that's got to come to an end. So that's that's a big worry, I think, going forward in the market. How, how do invest, how do you invite investors into your stock so new investors and how do you keep the guys invested in your stock that would traditionally be in fixed income products if it weren't for the Fed so are you let me put this this way you're investing but holding your breath is that it yeah, well, not holding our breath exactly. We still have to remain active. To, so there's still right. there's still interesting investments to be made out there. Yeah. But it's the going forward issue, Bill. So where do we go from somewhere. here? Yeah, I, where do we go from here? I think Jim Kramer can tell well, us about that words. too yes, in a little exactly. bit. Um, but Rex, you know, the, it's interesting right now to look at the dispersion of what people think is going on in the, in the economy. I mean, I have people on the one hand telling me that you know, geez, you have to look at how much more sluggishly the U.S. economy is going to grow over time, and you know, here are all of the reasons why globally. We're in a deleveraging phase and interest rates are headed lower. And then at the same time, um, people are passing around this narrative about 1996 and saying, you know, after we had a, a miss in January on weather, we had a strong February payroll number, and then the 10 year was rallying, you know, by a percentage point. In other words, people don't really seem to know right now what the paradigm is. What's your read? Well, you know, that should give you a lot of confidence and comfort. That is what you've just described as a balance in a market. You've got if you will, buyers and sellers on both sides, people making good cases for it to move higher and for it to move lower. It's not a one-sided market, which is when you get extremes, either on the downside or the upside. So that actually makes me feel more comfortable. I'm comfortable with the equity market. I'm somewhat even comfortable with the bond market. Less so, I would be short on the bond market. Um, but we see the economy getting better slowly. All the data you're pointing to really gets to the fact that we're going to have three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, we're in a slug. We know three we're in a slug. Three yards in a cloud economy. of dust? Wait, wait, what was that reference? Three yards in a cloud of dust. It's an old football reference. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back before there was a lot of passing. The idea wow. is that we're going to grind and make first downs, but it's going to be slow go growing in 2014 after a stupendous year in 13. Super Bowl did set the tone this I year. I guess. I'd never even heard that one. Drew Nordlake, actually, you would look at some of the, the fixed income right now. Is that for safety reasons, or do you actually think there's growth in fixed income here? No, Bill, from our point of view, we always would suggest maintaining your active diversification. So the fixed income market, and there are specific niches that we are actively investing, we do think investors should maintain their broad-based diversification and not pile into equity. And that being said, what we look at is we think the economy and the stock market are two separate animals on the same savanna. The Federal Reserve has been pumping liquidity into the marketplace, and a lot of that has found its way into the equity market, not as much as transmission into the overall overall economy. So with the equity market, what we see is the Federal Reserve is tapering, but with their $10 billion program over the next several meetings, it's still going to take to the end of the year for them to be done with that program. That's right. $315 billion of new liquidity being injected into the market and an expansion of their balance sheet. And what we found statistically is going back to 2009 when QE started, for every $100 billion of QE that's entered the marketplace, the S&P has moved higher by 42 points. So that translates to a 1976 target on the S&P, which is another 7% from here. So as long as the Federal Reserve is still in the marketplace, and regardless of tapering, they're still printing money, the balance sheet is still expanding, right. we would be active investors in equities. We All do right. think that there is challenges in the economy and challenges <laughs> with this quarter, but it is going to go, we do think it accelerates for the end of the year. I'm chuckling a little bit because there seems to be a lot of couching going on, a lot of yep. sort of fancy yep. ways to say we're not exactly sure what is happening in the landscape right now. And to, and to the point that Rex was making, that's fine. That's what makes a market. I'd like to know what some of the high conviction trades are right here. What are the right investments to make then in this environment? Uh, uh, Drew, any thoughts? 
Danny? So, so Sorry, and, and did you say Danny? Um, <laughs> no, it's Danny, go ahead. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, Kelly, I think that there's a lot of things that you can look at out there, particularly companies that are actually investing in their future. So CapEx increases. There's an awful lot of companies that are actually investing in the future. In 2014, big increases in CapEx. And you want to invest in those names? Yeah, in those names and, and in names that also, you know, and, and they could also have buybacks and dividends as well. They're not mutually exclusive. I think that, you know, UPS is a big one, $2.5 billion in 2014. Right. T-Mobile, you know, energy is a big space as yeah. well. Well, Goldman's Healthcare. whole note this week focuses on the picks and shovels plays that might actually support a CapEx boom as well. So you can see that work. Hey, Rick Santelli, if there is a conviction buy right now, gold would be one of those, wouldn't it? I mean, what, <laughs> what does that say about this market right now? Yeah, no, you know, I think gold could easily go up. I thought it would make a bottom uh, early this year. But I, I guess I'm still thinking about those yards of dust because when I think <laughs> of going yard, I think of a home run. And I think the Fed has allowed corporate profits to go three yards. We're talking 900-foot home runs. So corporate profits are going great. Danny's worried today. I've been worried for two years. But being worried in this environment doesn't mean you necessarily short the market. But as I look up at the fixed income, and I've been harping on this, you know, here we are. We've actually seen a 269 yield in tens while right. the S&P is flirting with all time highs. To me, you know, I know you have Jim coming up and that's great, but I think I have the best soothsayer in the world. Just looking at these interest rates that failed to follow the stock market up, tell right. me that it's all not good in investment land, but picking tops and picking bottoms is always a dicey endeavor. Yes, it is. And look, that, that's what comes down to market timing. Anyway, just going back to this question as well. So, you know, Danny raised an interesting point. Pick the companies that are, in, you know, doing a lot of investment, a lot of capital expenditure. Uh, Rex, Rex, what about you? What's your winning strategy here? Well, I think in the big picture, you want to keep some powder dry because I think there'll be more opportunities now uh, uh, in the months to come. So cash you know, short, is your answer? No, no. I would be more at my normal, uh, closer to our normal uh, asset allocation. We, we're a little heavier on stocks than bonds just because of uh, at a 270 10 year, we're not too fond of the bond market. Uh, well, we're, we're shorter. Where I come from, powder, dry powder is cash. <laughs> well, you, you said, can. You can you look at it that the way. It dry. used to be that it, it, you, where I came from, it was dry powder too. But when you don't get anything on your cash, I'm not sure it's uh, good dry powder. Bonds and and, and then that's powder. exactly the point that we're, I think we're talking about here is the Fed is wanting to force everybody into the risk assets because you're not getting anything to hold cash right now, even though so many companies are. Drew Nordlake, your yeah, conviction. Bill Kelly, by it, I, think, I think that, that that's the key issue. I think that, that you guys are bringing up the exact point that I think everybody on the panel is trying to suggest, is that we are in an environment where the Fed is one of the biggest players, the federal government and new legislation is a big player. The economy itself has not found very sure footing. I mean, we're not in the 1990s where we're seeing 5, 6, 7 percent GDP growth rates. So from the standpoint of looking for growth, you have to advise looking at multiple different opportunities, diversification, risk reduction, not piling into a single trade because the reality is, you try is that a little bit no of everything. No one knows the exact future. Yeah, I, mean, I love that. Wait, say it again. It. Say it again. <laughs> the reality is, that try no one everything. Knows the future. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're in an environment of, of, of higher risk and higher volatility. I mean, that that's the reality. When you have a player that has introduced four trillion dollars into the marketplace. You know, asset prices get skewed, and you have to invest based upon what are the knowns. And we know the Fed is there. We know they're going to be there through the end of the year. And I know our, our panelist, Rick Santelli, has, has harped on that before. But the, that's the facts. They're there. And so right. we need to advise and invest based upon that. There you go. Thank you all, folks, Thanks, very guys. much. Thank you. See you later. Thanks for your thoughts today. I wonder, wonder if anybody would consider Bitcoin a, uh, a <laughs> conviction buy right now. Yeah, part of a diversified portfolio. We'll get to that coming up a little bit here if you hadn't heard. Uh, heading toward the close, we're, we got 50 minutes left in the trading session. And if anything, we're slowly moving south right now. The Dow's down 27 points. The S&P is down two points. So we're about three points away from an all-time closing high. I'll keep an eye on that for you. Yeah, losing altitude again, second day in a row this week.